Hey guys, welcome back to the jungle. Sprangatang here. Welcome to my brand new channel about mycology. Here, I'll document my journey so that we can all learn from not just my mistakes, but also my huge successes as well. I'd like to start off quick with a comment of the day, as this will be our first one. Today's is from Your Spores. That's a perfect on the go hood. Great review. Thank you, man. I hope you keep enjoying the content. Anyways, today we'll be starting off something new. Well, this might not be an every Tuesday thing, this sounds like a really good idea to sort of talk to you all and explain to you all what's going on behind my grow in specific and just micro relating things in general. I call it Transfer Tuesday as not only is it Tuesday, but it's also filled with transfers. As I've been recently injured, my money situation hasn't been the best. This caused me to fall behind in my agar work a lot. I had lots of transfers to do, and in all honesty, I was lagging behind. I made do with what I could at the time, and made a few transfers. But, now that I have this flow hood, I was able to pour a bunch of agar plates, and slam out all the transfers that I needed to do, so that I could stay on top. Funny enough, it also falls right in line with our Grow Along projects. So, I decided to do transfers from those as well. Stay tuned to see what all I have going at the moment. To start off, obviously we do as always. I already did this step before filming, and I would have filmed it, but honestly I already had to cut out a lot of content to make it all fit. But anyways, make sure to sanitize all of the surfaces and racks with a sanitizing agent. I use not only 70% ISO alcohol, but also Lysol in cycles. This, in my opinion, will keep contamination to a low percentage considering you're using a flow hood or a sab. I can't stress enough how important it is for you to keep everything as clean as possible. This is the most important step in all of mycology. You'll honestly find yourself cleaning up more than you'll actually be tending to your mushrooms. After everything's cleaned up and your blades flame sterilized, make sure you spray your hands with ISO alcohol and let's get to work. Here is what you see is an update of the hybrid cross that we had started. While it's just barely germinated, I like to pull my little colony of mycelium sooner rather than later on a spore plate. This means some of the fastest genetics went out, along with also, I can prevent my chance of contamination the most I can. What I was looking for was a germinated colony that had another one touching it. This would ensure that I do not accidentally pull a monocarion and colonize a whole cake to realize it doesn't have its other half to even fruit. After that, we just make sure to label and also tape up all the plates. Now usually people use plastic wrap, grafting tape, or parafilm. Me, on the other hand, I just use a cheap brand of micro pour tape and tape the corners, as it hasn't failed me yet. I'm also making sure that I flame sterilize my blade in between transfers, as that would not be good at all to accidentally put two different genetics on a plate. Real quick, I'd like to take a second and show you this amazing flow hood that I'm using. It's 3D printed, which makes it super affordable and to start getting consistent results with your myco work. If you'd like to check it out and purchase one, my link and discount code will be in the description to help you all get started. They're durable, light, and super easy to just put it anywhere and do myco work. Also, me and my Sally Unlimity are looking to host a local advanced agar work class in the near future, hopefully featuring these hoods. More details on that in future videos. I'd also like to say that they were where I get a lot of my lab tools and such, so make sure to check them out. Next up, we have our Pheno Hunt projects. This is agar cups of the light cap, balloon stipe, and big cluster fruit that I recently cloned on this channel. I really am excited to see what the cakes 
and fruits look like when I spawn them. This is an entire journey we will be having together, so I can't wait to not only spread the spores and such, but also hopefully we can all leave with some more knowledge on mycology as a whole. I'm hoping that this channel ends up becoming a place where we can all learn something no matter what the skill level is. There shouldn't be such a closed door of knowledge for these beautiful and amazing things, and I can see now that door is slowly opening up. We should all be taught as a child that mushrooms aren't bad all the time. They're not only food, but also a medicine and even a tool. In my opinion, mushroom cultivation should be introduced hand in hand with gardening and such. While we learn about the plant kingdom as a child, I feel like it isn't as common to be hearing or learning anything about mushrooms or fungi. Real quick, I also like to say, with these, I like to kind of look for the smaller transfers on these, as it should be able to isolate a little bit more and give me a lot less chance of contamination as I'm bringing less agar over. While I'm flame sterilizing my blade, I'd like to show you all one last look at the hood I'm using. While I don't gain anything from repping this hood yet, I would love for all of us to level up our at-home mycology, as Myko Geeky would say. So please, go check out the link in the description, as there are some of the cheapest intro flow hoods on the market. You'll be able to pour agar, inoculate jars, do agar work, and swab fruits plus more, all in a HEPA filtered environment. Alright, to finish our last bit of the cloning projects, I'll walk you through real quick what I'm looking for. The fastest, most rope looking formation in the best cluster, more info on that in my agar work video. I'd also like to mention that a few of these cultures are some that come from some of my close friends cold storage. A couple of these original plates were dated almost 4 months old. Each and every single one of them started off initially good on the cups with very minimal contamination. So here's me moving them to full plates to grow out and make sure that they're clean before sending to grain. And like always, make sure you label it properly and tape your edges. Can't go wrong there. This is one of those said projects that I was talking about. I actually only had one of them contam on me, but within one transfer I was able to clear it up and it's looking perfect now. I believe I received 16 cultures and all of them are looking perfect. are actually some of the original plates that I had received. While they're fully colonized, they had been put into cold storage for holding, so I'm attempting to bring them all back and run them. They all were actually gifted to me, as this community is amazing with how giving you are. Everything you see here will eventually make its way into a 32 quart Sterilite gasketed bin and tested. Only the fruit that looked the best, in my opinion, will be kept until I have a full lineup of strengths and mutations that I absolutely love to cultivate. You'll never know if you love something until you try it. Besides that, we have some swabs here to test. This is some of my first swabs that I have ever done in front of this flow hood, and I can't wait to see how these germinate as I can test the efficiency of how well this hood works. For these, I start off by undoing the tape. 
The way that I tape these, I try my best to make sure that you can grab the bottom lip of the wrapper and rip it up, uncovering the swabs ready to use. This keeps all the tape and sticky residue off of my fingers as I'm doing transfers. After that, I grab the swab and make sure to swab it in a back and forth snaking pattern. This ensures that you'll have a high chance of germination off of just your first plate. When you get to the bottom of the plate, rotate the plate 90 degrees and swab it again. This is just sort of a double check to make sure that there is at least one point of germination on this plate. I also want to point out that I am rotating the swab the entire time that I swab the plate. Just another step I take to make sure. I really want to make sure that I have a lot of this swab touching the plate as this is one of my first swabs like I said and I plan to open a menu soon. This means that I myself need to stay on top of my game and test everything that I make. More info on Spore 2 Agar on my Sporta Agar video. And remember, make sure to label your plates properly and tape them up so nothing bad happens. Finally, this is how much agar I have going right now. If you are curious what it looks like to be ultra deep in a passion, this is mycology for you. Lots of plates. Real quick, before we go, I have a website that I just created giving you all the opportunity to support the Sparangatan Love wearing my merch. Doing so helps me to turn this into my full-time job or even part-time job. We have some really nice hats, shirts, hoodies, or even face masks so you can show your mushrooms you support me while doing your mycology work. I also have a Patreon where I post daily content about my grow, along with full informational fruiting content as I progress through my journey in mycology. When you become a patron, you gain access to my Discord server. This is where we all create a great sub-community around these amazing things we call fungi, along with make some amazing friends in the process. On my Discord, you'll be able to get a hold of me with any micro-related questions. Along with this, we'll be doing giveaways, group grows, and trading genetics as well. If you ever need any help, I'll be on there daily to try to help everybody out that I can. Alright guys, that's enough for me. Thank you all for tuning in so far. Make sure to drop a comment so that we can keep doing your comment of the day at the beginning of my videos. Let me know what you'd like to see, what problems you're having, or just let me know how your day was. Have a great day everybody, and be safe out there. Peace.